Well, uh, it's very obvious we got beat by a better football team today. And uh, it's a uh, very, uh, obviously, very disappointing loss. I think, you know, if you just look at, you know, the whole big picture uh, defensively, I mean, you start defensively and, and us uh, really not being able to slow them down pretty much all night. And I think that would be accurate to say we couldn't stop their run game. Uh, couldn't stop them throwing the football. Uh, Obviously, they've punted one time all night, so I think that pretty much tells the story. And uh, it's very poor performance defensively. Uh, offensively, we sputtered, obviously, early in the game and uh, you know, never seemed to come on track. And, and again, against an offense like that, you got to be able to get some first downs and you got to be able to, you know, move the football some and, and take a little bit of the pressure off the defense. But early on, we certainly weren't able to do that either. And, uh, so uh, it was pretty evident, it was pretty self-evident why, uh, you know, why we got beat. And, uh, but uh, again, my job is to continue to lead these young guys and again, go back to work and uh, try to get a win next week. But uh, again, I think uh, it was very obvious why and how we, uh, we got beat tonight the way we did. Questions? Jim, what do you tell the guys after a game like that? Well, I don't think there's really a lot you can tell them other than, uh, you know, that everybody's hurting the same amount. You know, and just like I told them, I said I love you guys for, you know, what you're uh, what you're trying to push through and, and the adversity that comes with, uh, you know, being one in seven. And uh, it's tough. It's tough. You know. So uh, again, we're just trying to uh, continue to push forward. Uh, and try, you know, continue to try to encourage them that when everything doesn't go exactly like you want it, you know, your job is to continue as a, as a man to push through and, and uh, continue to go to work. So we'll do that again tomorrow. Uh, but it's a, it's a locker room that uh, is very disappointed and they're hurting. Uh, they're used to winning and they like to win. And that just hasn't happened uh, near enough, obviously, in the last eight weeks. So uh, we'll continue to forge ahead and we'll continue to uh, give them the same message, and we'll continue to uh, try to work to improve. Gene, how do, how do you explain how far things have, have kind of fallen? I know it's no, there's no simple explanation. How, how do you do that? Well, I think you just said it. I don't think that there is a simple explanation. You know, I think that, uh, you know, a lot of times in football, things happen with momentum or lack of momentum both in games uh, and as seasons unfold. And, uh, you know, it's been a season where up to this point, you know, I just feel like there's really not been, uh, you know, much momentum gained anywhere to be able to build on uh, what comes with, you know, momentum. And so, you know, there's, a, a, again, there's, there's several factors in that. Uh, it'd be hard to put your finger on one. And uh, but it's uh, it's a it's a tough place to be in. There's no question about it. And, uh, but again, you know, we're going to continue to keep forging forward and uh, trying to work ourselves out of it. Would you would you say that, that this season is kind of indicative of of, a, of the programs kind of taking a step backward or, or not? Well, I, I don't know that I would assess everything in terms of that. You know, I think that uh, again, there's individual battles that uh, in, in individual positions where you've got a lot of different dynamics going on with uh, whether it's you or, you know, uh, different different things. I, I don't think that that's the case. You know, I don't really feel that at all. And uh, I feel like we're in a spot that's really rough and we got to try to pull our way out of it. Gene, you said that your, your job is to lead these guys each and every week. Does that get harder for you to do as each week seems to represent a new law? Uh, I think that in the game of football, I think that, you know, you experience uh, a lot of different things. We've experienced a lot of great things here. Um, the challenging part becomes when you experience uh, a lot of lows, which we obviously have experienced here lately. Um, I think it's difficult for anybody to, uh, no matter what you're facing, whether it's a football game or something very difficult in your life, I think it's very challenging for anybody, uh, particularly when you're 
job is to lead people. And so, sure, it gets challenging. And, uh, but that's my job, and I'm responsible to lead 18 to 22-year-olds uh, through good times and through some bad. And uh, so it's been, again, very challenging and difficult. And uh, I, as the leader, will not stop forging ahead, uh, leading these young guys to the best of my ability. What about Jonathan Wallace? Uh, was a bright spot, but the, the question is going to be now, kind of what took so long, why, why haven't we seen him do more, more, uh, quick, more quickly? Well, you know, I've, I've said it pretty much weekly that Jonathan has been taking bits and pieces of the offense, and I think he's been digesting them. Uh, I think he's been digesting them for a young guy pretty well. And uh, he got into a point in the game tonight where, you know, it was really, really good to see him do uh, some things that really show flashes and signs uh, of him maturing some. Uh, but, again, you can't throw everything at a young guy and expect uh, him to, you know, be able to uh, execute it all. That's number one. Number two, uh, at the point in time of the game, and you calm down a little bit with a lot of the blitzing and pressures and things of that nature, uh, not to take anything away from what Jonathan did, because I'm very proud of him. Uh, but, you know, when, you, when you're asking a guy to take on, you know, the whole you know, the whole game plan and all the things that come with it. It's just not that simple. But I think, as everybody saw tonight, you saw flashes of a guy that, again, uh, has an opportunity to keep getting, uh, you know, weaned on to the different parts uh, of the offense that he can succeed at. And I think he showed that tonight. Quite frankly, it's, it's been rare to see that kind of that level of quarterback play for extended period that he gave you tonight. Does he have a chance now to be a, a, the starter, name the starter going into next week? Well, we're certainly going to look at, you know, uh, I, I think the film tells a lot, obviously. and uh, But there's nobody that could argue he was very productive tonight. And I was really, really good to see that. I was really glad. Uh, it was really good to see that. And I thought the players got a little And uh, you know, he's a very confident young man. We'll evaluate this upcoming week, and we'll see where we are at with that. Again, the packages that he's had week to week have been small. And, uh, you know, even tonight, as much as he played, we didn't really vary off of all of the things that we've slowly been feeding him. So, uh, you know, but for the most part, he executed the things that we asked him to do uh, in, in a lot of ways uh, very well. Peers. That's what we watch the film. Can you talk about the front seven? Seem to have a lot of problems tonight on defense. Uh, I, I, I don't. I don't know, uh, Mark. That I would uh, limit that to the front seven. I would say that that's the front eleven. I didn't think we could tackle. I didn't think we could cover, and I didn't think we could rush the quarterback tonight. So I think that's pretty self-evident. And I don't know that you could ever pin that on one group. Uh, I think that you could argue that it was whatever 11 we had out there tonight were pretty ineffective. But I do have confidence that they'll come back and go back to work and try to improve. Would you say they fought for the whole 60 minutes, Gene? I would. Coach, uh, the first game of the season, you guys faced another explosive offense in Clemson. You guys played them pretty close. What's so different about this team three months later? Well, that's a good question. I think this is a different type of offense. You know, they're, they're, they're different. Uh, you know, they're spread, no huddle offenses. Uh, they're obviously difficult to defend. Uh, some are very different than others. This one's very unique. Uh, it's not exactly the same thing that we saw the first week. Uh, but, you know, until we go back and look at the film, and we, you know, we see why, you know, we couldn't stop the running game. And it didn't matter what they were running, we couldn't stop them. And, uh, you know, whether that's misfits or, you know, guys misaligning, um, you know, I think there was probably a lot of that in there. But this was a different type of spread offense than we faced the first week. And obviously we never, you know, we never slowed it down. 
And uh, you have several guys on this team that are on the national championship team. Um, do you think it's hitting them harder to go through this type of season, those guys, and obviously you yourself as well? Uh, you know, I don't think I don't, I don't think you can date back to uh, you know the successes that you've had and say that it hurts any more now because you've won 22 games the first you know, the last two years. I mean, it hurts. You know, nobody likes to lose. I know nobody in that locker room likes to lose. So. Um, I, I don't know that I can qualify that it hurts those guys more than anybody else. You got a lot of young freshmen in there that came to Auburn to win. So it hurts them too. So, uh, you know, I think it's just all around, you know, very disappointing for everybody in the locker room. more. Gene, you give up the most yards in the history of the program, second tied for the worst loss at home tonight. Fans emptied out at halftime. What do you, what do you have to say to the fans who, who left? And well, I, I really wasn't focused on that, but if they emptied out at halftime, it's obvious why, and I you know I can say I don't blame them you know, for what they saw. And um, you know, again, it was just a, a very poor performance. Well, on that, do you you said you would wait to the end of the year to evaluate everything? Do you do you maybe move that up after a performance like this to evaluate maybe? staff philosophy change anything like that well you know here's the thing I've addressed that before I addressed that and I understand that that's your job that's everybody's job to ask those questions and I respect that uh, but again I've got one concern I've got one concern that concern is those guys in the locker room and us trying to improve to get a win so um, I'm not going there I understand it's your job to ask that question I respect it I'm not going there and uh, we're going to keep forging ahead trying to win James, three, three weeks ago you said you weren't worried about job, your job security. Do you feel the same way today? Again, um, I'm going to answer you with the exact same question I just answered him. Um, I'm not going there. I addressed that a couple of weeks ago. And so I've got one concern. And my concern is the kids on our team in our locker room and getting them to improve so we can win. And it's not about me. One thing, one thing that had changed, though, since then was that President Coolidge issued a statement this past Thursday. What was your reaction to that statement? Well, I didn't really see or hear the statement, but again, I'll kind of go back for the third time and say what I just said. It's not about me, and I've got one concern, and that is the guys in that locker room. So if any of you would like to ask me that again, I'll say that for the fourth time. All right, Coach. Thank you.